Red light jumping has become an epidemic in Liverpool. And from what other people say in the comments, it's pretty much the same countrywide. This group of clips that I'm showing you now were collected within a four week period. And only the worst offending 50% are being shown here. So what we're going to do now is look at what we should do on the approach to any set of traffic lights. I'm going to give you some information on how the traffic light sensor system works. And we're also going to be looking at the amber light and our decision when the light changes from red to amber. Should you stop or should you go through? But my hardest task will be to convince certain stubborn drivers it's simply not worth it to go through these red lights. And that for a red light yeah. as well. <laughs> Okay, let's start with the basics. Red light means you must stop and wait behind the stop line. The first myth to be busted, red and amber means stop also. You do not start to go or move your car until the green light shows. The length of time that your traffic lights stay on green depends on many different factors. We're going to have a look at one main factor today which is traffic light sensors, but there are others. Now this is a big surprise to some people, but amber actually means stop at the stop line. You may go only if the amber light appears after you've crossed the stop line, or if you're so close to pull up it might cause an accident. The next thing I'd like to point out is that every single set of lights have movement sensors. These sensors pick up on the flow of the traffic and they allow the traffic to be managed. This management happens due to different times of day, build up of traffic at certain areas or even special events like football matches for example. Let's have a look on how they work at this junction. There is now a break in the traffic from the right and left sides of the lights, so someone else is going to start, and as you can see, it's traffic from the oncoming direction. When there is a break in the traffic from the cars turning right from the opposite direction, we're then allowed to go. Traffic is then allowed to flow normally for a number of seconds but this isn't always the same amount of time. You can now see a big space behind the silver car, which means the sensors from our direction are picking up no flowing traffic. So they're going to change the lights now. And then the cycle starts again in the same way from side to side, unless it's the pedestrian's time to cross the road. Even temporary lights, sensors on, be careful here. Don't have to slow too early, but yeah, keep up the flow. Just, now we don't really want to increase speed, Charlie, because you've left this gap pretty big. Lights could change, so be careful now, be ready to stop before the light. We can't with through. That's fine. Good. Do you understand what I mean about the gap yeah, that you created there? When I broke too early, so I just carried on going until I got behind them all. Yes. The, the breaking too early, um, like I said, just makes you not detectable by the sensors. Yeah. And that can then actually cause them to change. And the worst thing that you can do is try and race and make them when that's the case them. yeah you're struggling and what yeah. people will also be doing behind you is increasing speed and it's the worst thing you can do coming in towards the satellites yeah yeah all right so if you can't keep up with the flow 
and that gap is signif significant. Step yeah, just be ready for yeah. them to stop even more. So, all right. I'm not saying it won't change when you just up the flow of people. It still might, but less just likely. Less, yeah, less yeah. likely. Right. So now we've got an understanding of how the sensors work, let's have a little look what I would be doing on the approach to sets of lights. First of all, this setup ahead have just changed onto red. So what is the point in racing to get there? What I'm actually trying to do is check my mirrors and slow down enough. And if you look at the gap in the traffic side to side, they've stopped. It's time for us to go. And keeping things moving like this saves a huge amount of fuel and also lowers risk massively. This next set is on green, so the problem's a little different. Now the reason why I've paused this clip here is to point out this different coloured area of tarmac on the approach to sets of lights. It's a little bit more abrasive and creates a little bit more grip for the cars and it's put at danger areas, so you should never be increasing speed when you're in these areas. So we should have already checked the mirrors and assessed just how close people are behind. And from here on in we should be reducing our speed and being ready to stop behind the line. If someone was extremely close we might use the steady amber as a safety net and go through, but that's only if it's dangerous to stop. Although this distance looks massively distorted because the wide angle dash cam, once you are past the last marking on the floor or the last arrow, this is the big decision time. You do not want to be doing an emergency stop, but quite often you could still stop very quickly and be safe. In my opinion, the reason why people get it so wrong is that at this point they'll be trying to increase speed and make the lights before they change. And then they're often going too fast to come to a safe stop and before they know it, they're jumping red lights. And as I've explained in previous videos, it's usually to just go and sit at the next set, which are usually on red. One last piece of advice I'd like to give out, if it's okay, is as you're passing through any traffic light junction, please don't trust the people from either side. Have a little glance to the right and to the left a couple of times as you're passing through the junction. It may just save your life one day.